Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Now, the chart in front of us, and I want to make sure everyone can see this, this is a euro currency, this is a seasonal chart pattern, and this is a 10-year chart pattern uh, It was done in June of 08, so I haven't added to it in the last two years, but it, the one that we use currently has been obviously updated. But I just wanted to use this older chart because it really hasn't changed the dynamics of the average seasonal pattern. What's interesting is that in the 1st of September, we tend to see, and if I can show you here, I'm going to take my drawing tool. God forbid I start drawing everywhere. But right around, and I'm going to erase that. That's not the specific drawing tool I wanted. I want the pencil. Here we go. All right. Right around, as you can see, around the 1st of September, as you can see the arrow I'm drawing, we see a market the euro currency kind of bottom, and through much of the month of September, the market rallies. Now, here's what I'm talking about. From the general peak that we've seen some years and the secondary peak that occurs on or about the first two days of October, the average date, that's what I'm talking about, the average date is today for a peak in the euro currency. So that's the area of interest right here, the average date. So that if that means that sometimes we see a trough, a peak here, and sometimes we see a peak here, and if we look down on our time horizon, you'll notice it's about the third week of October and the first week, or excuse me, the third week of September and the first week of October. So if you average that out, today's the average date. All right? Now this is a weekly bar. And I'm trying to explain that on a day chart, this is where we would come up with the average date from. All right. So I've, in order for me to trust a market seasonal tendency, I've got to ask myself, has the market been performing as far as market direction-wise? Not price moves, but market direction-wise. Has it been adhering to these trend swings? And the answer is yes. We have, from the 1st of September, seen an increase in value in the euro currency. Now, from on or about today's date going forward, we see the euro currency correct to the downside, forming lows by mid to late October. So this is one, if we're looking for a short-term trade, I'm looking for the trend to reverse or at least looking for a correction in the euro currency futures for the next three to four weeks. Then, from that point in time, from October, um, there's several opportunities one can employ. One can wait if they w want to look for a seasonal tendency for the market to rally, or one of the strongest, and I mean it's 100%. So far, in 11 years, the trade has not failed, folks. On or about the second trading day of January, you sell short the euro currency versus the U.S. dollar. So in that case, you would be looking at maybe buying put options in the EUU. And I'm going to flip back to my charts in just a minute with my, uh, and show you some stuff here with my trading account over at Thinkorswim, um, just because we have our indicators built there. And uh, it's real easy to show you this stuff. So let me go over here, and I'm going to take control. So we're going to go share desktop. All right. I'm not sure which desktop is being shared. Uh, John, we're looking at... Um, is it white or blue? It's a white. Uh, background is uh, JP indicated plug-in 
Eight minutes. Okay, minutes. wrong monitor. No worries. All right, that's blue. There you go. Excellent. Yeah, it didn't. Um, I apologize, everyone. I'm not as familiar with this platform. Um, to go with shared desktop did not give me a choice unless I'm missing a button. What? This isn't what you want to show us, the blue? Yeah, I just moved it in the other monitor. We're good. All okay. good, Steve. All right. Now, this is the spot euro currency ISE's EUU. This tracks the actual value and represents what you would see in the futures. Now, this is a daily chart. So I've got a futures chart, and I'm going to bring that up to you. And as you, uh, as you can see, from on or about the 1st of September, right, we've seen the euro currency rally. So it has adhered to its seasonal tendency to see price gains. So if we go back and show you with, instead of trading, if you're a stock and equities trader, how can you take advantage of these moves. Well, it's real simple. Um, you don't have to open a futures account. You can actually trade the ISE's spot Eurex USD index, which is really neat because then you don't have to do any conversion and it's not inverted relationship with the, uh, such as the EUI, which I'll show you in just a moment. What's intriguing to me is A, from a seasonal perspective, the market peaks out on or about today. And so what we'd want to look at is say, all right, number one, we peak out. Did the market rally? Because I'm not going to sell something unless it's rallied. And I'm not going to look for a correction if the market, there, there can't be a, a reaction unless there was an action. So did the action conform to its normal seasonal tendency? And the answer is yes, it has. Now what's interesting, what you see on your screen is the, um, and many of you have been and seen uh, my presentations before. This is an indicator which is called person's pivots. These are the monthly pivot points. In other words, what this is based on is a mathematical formula that gives me the projected range and the market condition. If the market's bullish, it's going to give me a predicted level of resistance for the month of September. So at the end of August, it gave us, as you can see, uh, the market has this recalibr recalibrates on August 31st for the 1st of September, and it says, if the market's bullish, this could be the potential range, 124 up to 136. And what's really neat is that you'll notice that today we finally reached our monthly pivot resistance target. So now we're, we've got a couple factors working uh, at us for making a, a trade decision. A, the market has seen a seasonal rally during the month of September. And the market is at a level of a longer-term monthly pivot resistance target. So we're near resistance levels. So if I was going to be a seller of a product, I'd want the market to go up, and I'd want it to be near resistance, and I'd want it to be in a time period of the year that the market's seasonally weak. Wow, what a great setup. So that's the setup. All right, so the opportunity is potentially to look for the market to correct and retrace back down. So then I'd have to say, so what could I expect to see the market retrace in the next three weeks? Well, um, if you're absurdly uh, bearish on the market, you could say 100% of the whole swing. So you'd say the market could pull all the way back here to this 125, 126 level. Uh, if you're more conservative like I am, I would say the market could pull back to the 130 level. And uh, that would be 130, 131 would be something within the norm of reality because it was just there, um, just one, two, three, four, five, six, well, just seven trading days ago. So would it, could the market possibly retrace back to 130, 131 in the next 21 trading days? After all, it, it took seven, just seven days ago we were right there. And to me, I would say, yes, that would be kind of appropriate. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.